to Him to serve the present day, my calling to fulfill. O oh, may all my calling to do my master's will. Help me to walk and Heavenly Father, come in your mighty power and let your glory cover this holy place. Speak to us the word of life and by your power quicken even our mortal bodies, steer our hearts, direct our wheels that we may walk with you in total obedience and submission to the glory of your holy name in the name of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit Amen Please be seated of Nigeria. My lords of the Church of Nigeria. The Chancellors of the Church of Nigeria or then Henry Ajimogobia S.A.N. The Registrar of the Church of Nigeria Barrister Dr. Abraham Yisa M-O-N The Prolocutor House of Clergy Church of Nigeria The Venerable Iswa D. Saidu The Chairman House of Laity Church of Nigeria Honorable Justice B. O. Ogunade Our Distinguished Guests Gentlemen The House of Clergy, the House of Laity, brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank God Almighty for his protection over every one of us and traveling mercies in this challenging time. On behalf of my wife Angela and I, we express our gratitude to the Archbishop Nicholas and Mama Cassiobioko for the great leadership you gave to the Church of God and for standing with us. We thank you all, our Archbishops and Bishops and our Mamas the clergy and the laity, individuals and groups, for your prayers, encouragement and support. 
the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent lockdown have severely tried individuals, families, the church, and our world. There is no doubt that this world belongs to God and He controls all that happens. Our God is the sovereign Lord of the earth. In this very start of our primacy, it will be necessary that we refocus in our calling and service and continue to build upon the wonderful legacies of faith which we received and make amends where necessary. Jesus Christ raised a pertinent question with the disciples as to who the people say he is. It was a searching question and a definitive one. Any life worth living and any ministry that is worth exercising demands that self-evaluation be essential. We need to examine ourselves whether we are still in line within the will of God, lest we labor in vain. We need to make God's priority our main task and walk obediently with God. In these challenging times <clears throat> in individual and national life, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Therefore, brethren, receive strength to stand. Stand strong in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our mission focus as required by the constitution and the canons of the church of nigeria anglican communion 1997 as amended as bishop henry chukudum dokoba was presented as the fifth archbishop metropolitan and primate of the church of nigeria on the 25th of march 2020 by the leading of God, it was declared as the decade of God's reign. The gospel which we proclaim is the gospel of the kingdom of God. The ministry which we exercise is that of the kingdom and our prayer is focused on the kingdom, the authority and power of the sovereign God our creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. His will and purpose shall be done in his word and in his church. The ministry of the church is about God and the very lives of the people and not about our positions or group interests and possessions. Therefore, a situation wherein people act and behave as though the church belongs to them is the height of blasphemy against God. The idols that occupy the place of God must be cast down and out. Jesus Christ must be the Lord and Savior of our lives, His church and His world. In discipline and corruption, must not become aware of life. All of life must be sanctified unto God. This is the decade of the reign of God and raising the citizens of God's kingdom through purposeful discipleship as very vital to the work of the church. We hope to re-engage and re-evangelize and disciple our members and as many as God will bring our way. The impact of Boko Haram, harassment attacks in communities, banditry, 
and kidnapping and violence is such that in many places we have lost lives and property. In some parts of our church, the average age of the Anglican church attendance is above 50 years. We have continued to lose our children and youth to the new generation churches. This hemorrhage occurs more from the teenage to young adults and especially when they go into tertiary institutions. The current movement of the young Muslims from the north to cities in the south opens up a new mission field. Some years ago, we had considered the replanting of Christianity in the northern part of this country as a response to the devastations around us. More so, the creation of our response to the decade of evangelism has opened up this country for the gospel and placed the Anglican Church in a strategic position throughout the nation. One considers that this decade will be dedicated to growing the church in faith, membership, and a church that is indeed engaging in pragmatic evangelism and fulfilling the great commission of Christ the Lord and waiting eagerly for his glorious return. For this purpose, mission, evangelism, and discipleship will remain core to the ministry of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. Our heart is set on serving the purpose of God for his church. There is no room for unhealthy rivalry, warfare or quarrel as we walk for the unity and peace we for unity and peace we shall also work to maintain truth and godly dis discipline and set everything in order in the church of god the achievements of our bishop our bishops timothy olufo sawyer joseph adeti lawyer peter akinola akiola and Nicholas Oko will be sustained and built upon. We shall give our energy to serving this church in humility and to consolidate the growth of the Church of Nigeria and her ministry to the world. In order to sustain the growth of the church, we shall build the institutions of the church which will support the work of the provinces, the dioceses, and local parishes. A strong national church will no doubt be a great safeguard for mission, ministry, and support for the weaker and missionary areas of the church. The Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion in this end time is called for the defense of the gospel. We are totally committed to contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. Together with all our bishops, clergy, and laity, we shall stand against the revisionist strange doctrines that deny the authority of the Word of God, the Bible, and its power to order and guide our lives and practice. We will continue to uphold the orthodox faith in Christ Jesus, the authority of the scripture and the Anglican heritage as we have received it. We shall resist the invasion of homosexuality, lesbianism and occultism into the church of God. We shall not yield to the shrewd or subtle appeal of the church of England or America or their agents to compromise the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> On our national issues, COVID-19 era challenges, it started like a fairy tale 
in a distant Hunan province in China and gradually but fast and mysteriously spread to every nation on the earth. The World Health Organization and other world of government organs we are struggling to understand how to respond to the coronavirus pandemic. The worldwide lockdown affected everybody and everything. In Nigeria, the epicenter is Lagos State, followed by the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. It disrupted everything socially, economically, educationally, health, and well-being was most threatened. Fear of death and hunger harassed the ordinary Nigerian in, in spite of the assistance and the palliatives given by churches, NGOs and the government. In some cities, criminality threatened to take over. The relaxation of the lockdown after three months eased movement for our citizens. The problem is that the citizens are expected to take personal responsibility for their safety. The initial lockdown <coughs> policy of the federal government, federal and state governments created a lot of social economic problems and almost brought the society to the point of anarchy. The palliatives by the government were not enough and some discriminatory practices were seen in some places. The most confident, the most, the most confidence damaging was the politicization of the pandemic by some state governments in order to get the money being given by the federal government to assist them. There were forceful isolations which were exposed by the demonstration by those kept by some states. The rush in the number in some states and the insistence by others that there were no cases there made the ordinary citizens to doubt the genuine efforts and information being passed by the government agencies. The effect of that is that is the carefree attitude in wearing the face mask. While we want to live normal and free, these are uncertain times. Everybody must take responsibility and protect himself or herself, the family and friends, by doing the instructions given by the NCDC, the P. TF and the Ministry of Health, such as the hygienic law, the hygienic rules, the social distancing, the stay at home, and if you must go out, put on the face mask to cover your nose and mouth. This is a warfare against an unseen enemy that is very subtle and dangerous. We have learned we can defeat coronavirus as we defeated the Ebola. The greater devastation is in the finances and loss of jobs and income. But we trust God to restore us to everything that the locust of COVID-19 had eaten or stolen. God will give us on every side in the name of Jesus. Insecurity, insecurity, violence and devastation are increasingly overtaking us in every part of this country. The politics of state policing or the way to implement community policing and the regional security outfit and the issues surrounding that show that often individual and particular group sentiments be cloud the implementation of some programs in Nigeria. Security should be the foremost task of the government. 
but it is also the responsibility of every citizen. The involvement of different layers of security agencies by government at the different levels and proper coordination and legislation will definitely help in the fight against insecurity. There is need for synergy among our politicians and not time for name calling or blame. The laws enacted by states to ensure the security of lives and property of citizens must be respected and should not be undermined by other groups. More than anything, sincerity of purpose and unity for the, uni for the safety of lives and property of the citizens must be the overriding goal. The unending war against insurgency and the multiplicity of violent crimes to the point that <clears throat> some roads and parts of this country are taken over by kidnappers and banditry is frightening. We appreciate the efforts of the Nigerian Armed Forces, the police and all the security agencies and the ultimate prize they pay for the defense of our fatherland. We call on the government at all levels to continue to give them what they need to do their work and to take care of their welfare adequately. Together, we shall defeat insecurity in Nigeria. Yeah. National economic diversification. The, the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic is so much loss of income and with the continued closures of some sectors there will be loss of jobs and retrenchment especially in the private sector of the economy the SMEs must be helped with some economic stimulus so as to support our national economy the diversification of our economy through the recent gas project is a welcome development but every section and zone must be included in phased development. A gas development program will help in reviving our economy in view of the dwindling oil pricing and its impact on our economy. Agriculture and the exploration of our natural minerals are two sectors that require more attention. We appreciate the efforts of the National Economic Council and other organs being set by the government and the different programs by the Central Bank of Nigeria to activate, revive and sustain our national economy. These efforts must be sustained. A sustained focus in the development of some critical sectors of the economy is needed in order to overcome the challenges of the post-COVID-19 period. Rap, mother, and sexually based violence. The incidences of rape and murder are disturbing. When the people you know and love are victims, the pain is much more. This litany of woes must be checked and be brought to an end by legislation and then law enforcement. We commend the public demonstrations by many groups against such dastardly acts. We appreciate state governments that have taken concrete steps to safeguard our girl child, boys and women against sexual violence. Our children <clears throat> and young people shall, not, shall never be preyed upon. They must be given a secured future. Nigerians are very religious. Therefore, we should know this that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man 
who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Rape, sexual violence, and murder are against the natural law and the violation of God's word. And those who do such evil shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Kama law, it is necessary for us to make a clear statement concerning the controversial new power conferred on the Corporate Affairs Commission by Section 839 of the amended Kama 2020 Act to obtain an order of court to suspend the, tr the trustees of any religious, charitable or non-profit association in Nigeria and appoint an interim manager or managers to manage their affairs. This merits some comments as it directly affects the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion as one of the registered organizations and association and its 163 dioceses whose assets are vested in its trustees for the time being. The stipulated conditions for such suspension these where the CSA believes that there is or has been misconduct, mismanagement or a need to protect the trust the trust property, public interest, or prevention of fraud are so plainly subject to abuse. This can be an instrument of witch hunting and suppression. We have seen this play out in the cells of our banks. The Church of Nigeria supports the desire to ensure probity in all incorporated and non-incorporated bodies in Nigeria, including non-profit associations, which include churches. Through the implementation of the Act, the relevant provisions of which incidentally are identical to sections of the UK Charity Act of 2011. The Church of Nigeria has consistently spoken out about the corruption that has become endemic in our nation and the need to root it out wherever it rears its cancerous aid. There is admi admittedly, admi admittedly a need for the trustees of the churches to promote good and honest corporate governance within the churches through transparent accountability in the management of its affairs given reported instances of abuses. However, on account of the peculiarities of church as a faith institution, the almost unlimited power and discretion purportedly conferred on the Commission <clears throat> or on the, on the stipulated one-fifth of the members of the association that is, if it is to determine the scope and application of these new powers is clearly subject to mischief and abuse. The law as it stands enables com the Commission to unilaterally obtain an order of court to suspend trustees of a church and appoint anybody, any person as interim manager or managers without a guarantee prior fair hearing of the church in response to any claim or allegation by the commission or such minority of its members. Even though the court order, even though the court order to suspend trustees is to be obtained 
Upon the hearing of the petition, it ought to have been categorically stated in the Act that the Commission or a minority of its members cannot exercise this power through an ex parte court order. We must therefore draw attention to and express grievous concern over this serious lapse and undue weakness of the, <clears throat> of the due process provision in this Act and call for immediate review of the relevant provisions of the Act. We also call on the Nigerian judiciary to be vigilant in the adjudication of matters pertaining to the application of sections 839, especially as it affects religious organizations in particular, pending the review of the relevant provisions of the Act as is urgently being called for. We need to have a proactive national church engagement and response uh, and response on socio-political issues, especially those that affect the Church of God in Nigeria, like the Kama law, where we keep on reacting to issues is not the best. Therefore, we constitute the Church of Nigeria Socio-Political Interface Team. They will help us to articulate our position and respond as a church during public hearings in our national assemblies and to some key socio-political issues. The team shall represent the Church of Nigeria in public socio-political issues that are of interest to the church. The members of this interface team are 1. Right Reverend Dr. Duke Akami Soko as the chairman. Right Reverend John Garba Dambinta. Right Reverend Olajide Adebayo. Right Reverend Israel Okoye. Barrister Mrs. Kainde Ajani. Uh, Venerable Justice Okorongpo. Venerable Ifain Akunna. Honorable Chris Azubogo. Honorable Buki Oyewo. Oyewo. Senator Philip Tanimu Aduda. Senator Obayemi, Obayemi Bamidele and Venerable Joseph Unwaya. The removal of fuel subsidy and inflation. The recent removal of the fuel subsidy and the deregulation of the energy sector will further increase the suffering of the common man in Nigeria. The plight of the ordinary Nigeria is getting worse by the day. This needs to be reviewed. The essential commodities are out of the reach of the citizens, and the hike in prices of goods and services, coupled with unemployment, is making life unbearable for Nigerians. Apart from the social investment palliatives and financial relief by the government, the church, and other organizations, some regulations must be put in place that will help the people socially and economically. But let us face the truth. Industrialization is the key to mass employment of our citizens. The thing, the priority of God, Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other all other things shall be added to you taken from the gospel of Jesus Christ as recorded by St. Matthew it was written by Matthew the son of Alphaeus the apostle who was a tax collector whom Jesus called to be his disciple in Matthew 9, 9 to 13. Matthew's gospel was written in about 60 AD 
in the region of Syria and probably in Antioch. The purpose of Matthew was to show that authority and power belongs to Jesus Christ as contained in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 18-20. His power and authority is given to his disciples to preach the gospel and teach the word of God, the word of God's kingdom, demonstrating his power, baptizing and making disciples of all nations. The making of the disciples is the core task of the believers in Christ. A disciple is a person who willingly learns to be like his master by following and practicing the teachings of his master as a way of life. Such disciple also passes on to others what he has learned from his master. The Gospel of Matthew is divided into seven sections comprising of the introduction with five teaching sections and the conclusion. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is a descendant of David. He is the savior of the world, both for Jews and the Gentiles. His power and authority is over all people, groups, all tribes of the earth. Jesus is designated by God to be the Messiah with authority for all nations. Matthew laid emphasis on the teaching ministry of Jesus and the demonstration of his authority. Our text is taken from the first teaching session commonly called the Sermon on the Mount, which is a series of the teachings of Jesus on the life and life, lifestyle of those in God's kingdom as seen in Matthew chapter 5 to 7. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus teaches on what believers should do in giving to the needy, as we see in verses 1 to, two, 1 to 4, how to pray and fast, 5 to 18, the right use of material things and laying up treasure in heaven, 19 to 24, and worldly cares versus God's priority, in verses 25 to 34. Seek first. <clears throat> to seek for something means or search for something or someone eagerly and earnestly with a consuming concentration. When Jesus said seek first, it means the things that are of utmost importance that is worth spending every energy, resources and drive to acquire and to return. The first is the priority. When we talk of priority, it is something that you think to be more important than other things and should be dealt with first. It is to give something the most important place among various things that have to be done. Priority entails that there are competing, competing demands, ordering things according to the scale of preference and choices to be made according to the needs and importance. We live in a world of competing demands. We face daily what one will call existential confrontation of realities in life. And the choices we make impact our lifestyles and our eternal destiny. Why are we doing what we are doing? This question searches out our motives and our inordinate ambitions. Again, when we look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, the, the the, to determine priority is to determine preference of service. It is to determine loyalty passion as to who to love or hate. It is evident that the one whom we serve 
is the one whom we are passionate about. And the same is the one who we are loyal to. That is the master. As individuals and families, and more importantly, the, as the Church of Nigeria, we must make the choice between and as against God's own priority. <clears throat> when we talk of priority, we are at the core of service, of loyalty, and of passion. In our work with God, as individuals and as, as a church or a nation, even for Israel as God's people, there is a competing demand to choose the to choose God's way or the way of the world. There is a constant warfare between the Holy Spirit and the flesh. The worship of idol, Baal and Asherah continues to be a threat to the worship of the living God. Apostle John and James warned Christians of all generations saying, Do not love the world or the things of the, in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Apostle James asks, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires to, for pleasure that war in your members? Adulterers and adulteresses, do, not, do you not know that friendship with the world is an enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. One cannot say it clearer than this. What to seek? First, seek God. In a society that is a, as religious as Nigeria, it will seem as, as a lack of seriousness for one to speak of seeking God. We are immersed into rituals and religious observances. <coughs> The scriptures testify that people can worship <clears throat> what they do not know. As Jesus said to the Samaritan woman at the well. The woman raised the religious issue. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe is coming when you will neither worship on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is. When the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Jesus points out that it is possible to worship what you do not know. And the place you worship does not matter as much as who you worship. Secondly, relationship with God is very vital in knowing and serving God because Jesus referred to God as Father first before calling Him God. Thirdly, this knowing of God is the experience of His salvation which He revealed to His redeemed people, the Jews, and ultimately in Jesus Christ to us. Fourthly, this knowing 
of God is a spiritual experience that imparts life from deceit to truthfulness and sincerity in dealing with God and with other people. True worship and service to God must be by the help of God through the power of life in the Holy Spirit. Paul the Apostle speaking to the Athenians said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription is <clears throat> to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. Knowing God and experiencing his salvation is vital in the relationship with God. God created us in his own image and likeness so that he can let it with us. Sin destroyed this relationship with God. But in Christ Jesus, God redeemed us from the cause of, of, the, of sin and death and gave us forgiveness and mercy and eternal life in Christ Jesus. St. Augustine of Hippo said, God, you created us for yourself, and our soul is restless until it has found rest in you. God desires that we find him, know him, and serve him. Moses warned Israel that when they disobey and rebel against God, he will cause them to be conquered and scattered among the pagan nations and they would be enticed to worship other gods and deities. But, from there, you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. The desire of any person who ever wants to walk with God is the hunger to know and to experience God continually. This was the cry of Moses when he said, Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight. Please show me your glory. The hunger and yearning, this hunger and yearning, was also in Paul the Apostle. When he said, the Lord again to me, these I have counted as lost for Christ, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death, if in any way, in a, by any means, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. This is not just mere head knowledge, but an encounter with Jesus Christ in which we acknowledge our loss in sin and our helpless condition and cry out for God's mercy. We must be desperate for God and His intention, intervention in our lives to seek and to receive what God has done for us in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is the only Savior and Lord. Therefore, God offers us His help and salvation. We cannot know God and still continue in our old ways, bequeathed by our old traditions and spiritual powers of, the, of this age. In most cases, we seek God for what we can get from God in times of need and trouble. But God desires that his children will seek him for who he is to them. Amen. The purpose of God. When we talk, when we know God, it is evident that we shall desire to know his ways. 
his purpose and his will. God wants us to walk in line with his purpose and programs. When God instructed Moses to build the tabernacle in the wilderness, it was to be built according to the pattern and the plan he revealed to Moses on the mountain. God has definite plan for his children, for his people. And it is of good. God has purpose for our redemption and for the church of God. In the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, there is a definite purpose he came for. The church and the life of every believer is purpose driven. And it will do us great good to understand God's purpose and key into it. Everything concerning Jesus Christ has a goal. Jesus says that all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. The purpose that Jesus, that Jesus Christ came for is to preach the good news, the gospel of the kingdom of God and his reign give salvation and eternal life to all who believe in him. He came to save the lost, as we see in Luke 15. As Jesus declared in the house of Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. In Luke chapter 4, 18 to 19, Jesus declared his purpose of coming. Without the death of Jesus Christ and the shedding of his blood, there is no remission of sins. To die the cruel death was the Father's will and to accomplish his work. Jesus Christ died and rose again from the dead in fulfilling the purpose of God. This is the demonstration of his victory over sin, the devil, and the world. Likewise, the main purpose of the church is to proclaim this Jesus Christ faithfully until he returns in glory and power to judge the world. Jesus has commissioned the church and commanded the believers in him, saying, this is written that thus it was necessary that Christ, that the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. The ultimate purpose in the life of any person called of God will be to seek and pursue the priority of God. The overarching priority, his kingdom and his righteousness. This should be sought with all our heart and soul. This should take all our time, resources and life. When we make God's priority our priority, every other thing in life will fall into its proper place. In union with Christ and in relationship in Him, everyone, every other His kingdom. The kingdom of God is the central theme of the Bible. God is clearly presented as the creator, owner, and ruler of the whole creation. Israel, as a special people of God, are called to belong to God as his people, whose king is the Lord God Almighty. Whoever was the human king or ruler of Israel did rule as a shepherd and represented God. The demand of Israel for an earthly king like other Gentile nations was interpreted by Samuel as the rejection of the kingship of God. But Israel remained a theocratic nation under David 
and other kings of Judah. The prophets served to call Israel to repentance and to return to the leadership of God. Apart from the call to follow the laws and commandments of God, under the kingship of David and Solomon, Israel ruled other Gentile nations around them. This was the golden age of Israel, and they longed for it to continue, especially in the expectation of God's anointed, the Messiah, the promised son of David, who would destroy the yoke of the Gentiles, rule over Israel, and restore the kingdom to Israel, as it was in the days of David. The political earthly kingdom ex expectation of Israel remained fervent until the days of the earthly ministry of Jesus. And that is why the disciples understood him as the Messiah whom Moses and the prophets spoke of, but like the Jews of their day, they were expecting a political liberation. And as of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 6, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? When we talk of the kingdom, it has to do with sovereignty, royal power, our dominion under a king or a sovereign. Kingdom denotes the territory or a people over whom a king rules. Therefore, when we talk of the kingdom of God, it is the sphere of God's rule. The world and the humanity are in rebellion against God because of sin and the oppressions of satanic dominion. But Jesus Christ came to restore the rule of God over the peoples of the world. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. God has not given up his sovereignty over humanity. Rather, he has declared his dominion in his Son Jesus Christ, who through whom God rules in the affairs of the earthly kingdoms of the world. Amen. Amen. There is the principle that is at work in the understanding of the kingdom. It is where the king is, there is the kingdom. Jesus Christ declares that his kingdom is not of this world. The kingdom of God transcends the earthly sphere because the dominion of Christ is an eternal and everlasting kingdom and dominion and covers the whole world. It is beyond any, geographic, any geographical boundary. The uniqueness of the kingdom of God is that beyond the citizens and spheres of the kingdom, the king and the lord of the kingdom embodies the kingdom himself. Jesus Christ embodies the kingdom of God such that wherever his rule is, there he rules in his kingdom. God rules in the lives and the hearts of the believers who receive and believe in him in his name. To such God gives the power to become the children born unto him and adopted as his own people by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world, sin and Satan. But also such is led by the Holy Spirit. Though God is high and lofty, yet he dwells in the humble and lowly heart. He delights to live and walk among us, his people as our God and Father and we as his people and sons and daughters. The church is also considered as the sphere of the king of the reign of God but not limited to the physical church. The Roman Catholic once thought that they are the only church of God and outside their church there is no salvation. The truth is that the church can be the instrumentality of God in reaching out with the gospel. Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, 
and the life. No one can come to the Father except by Him. He is the source of eternal life. And as the scripture says, this is the stone which was rejected by, the, by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This assurance and uniqueness of Jesus Christ must be clearly proclaimed. The kingdom of God as his reign over his redeemed people stretches into the future. The kingdom of God through though present with us now in Jesus Christ and active, active through the word of God. Yet it awaits a consummation when Jesus Christ shall return in his glorious majesty to harvest the saints and to judge the world. Jesus teaches us to pray for the coming of the kingdom of God both in the present and in the end time. The main task of the church is to proclaim the gospel of Christ as witness to the world and to offer the people the opportunity to repent and return to God and God through faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, as God's ambassadors, the church is given the ministry of reconciliation to the world and for our generation. The kingdom has citizens and kingdom servants. Jesus demands total obedience and doing what he teaches. Therefore, obedience is sign of hearing Jesus. How can a person become a citizen of the kingdom? It is first by the new birth which comes by repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. One does not become a citizen of God's kingdom by natural birth or association in the church or by the position of good we occupy or the good works we do. It is who have been convicted of their sins and convinced of the, of the forgiveness and righteousness of God we receive by the mercy of and the grace of God and the certainty of the fearful judgment that is to come for both the living and the dead at the coming of Jesus Christ. The kingdom citizens, the citizens of God's kingdom are distinguished by their radical obedience and doing the will of God. Kingdom servants, because of time, I will jump some sections. God is raising his kingdom citizens from every group, religious experience, culture, social class. His eternal plan is that when Jesus shall return and gather the saints of God, it shall be a great multitude which no one could count. Of all nations, of all tribes, of all peoples, of all tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and with palms, branches in their hands. This is where we will, we all must prepare to be at last. Because if in this life, if only in this life we struggle to be recognized and have hope, when then we are of all people most to be pitied. Are you really a citizen of God's kingdom or not? We must seek to become, to become now what God in Christ has called us to be, the redeemed humanity from every tribe, from every tongue, and that shall be at last the glorious gathering when Jesus shall return. Therefore, seek the kingdom of God. His righteousness has to do with right standing with God. Um, 
and judge people because time is far spent. And when you get your copy, you will see it. Um, it is not just repenting and receiving Jesus, but as John the Baptist said to the people who came to him, he said, bring forth the fruits that befit your repentance. Uh, somebody said that the, the, the irony of the church now is that what we do contradicts what we profess. May God help us. Uh, the, the, the whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of the living God. People in radical obedience to God. People who are ready to pay the price and bring forth the fruits. The fruits of righteousness. The fruit of righteousness has to do with obedience to God's will. This is the hallmark of righteousness. Promptness in doing God's word brings us into the delightful relationship with God. Jesus commands every believer to love others and even those who hate us and despitefully use us. This is the mark of being his disciple. If we love one another, Jesus commands us to abide or remain rooted in him and in his word. This is the only way a believer can be fruitful and productive. He, he, he has chosen us to bear fruit that will abide. The fruit of godly character and Christ-like life. The fruit of the spirit. The fruit of soul winning unto the kingdom. The fruit of good work and work of mercy or compassion. When you get your uh, copy, you look at it. Uh, time is far spent. But there are distractions, brethren. Distractions. Satanic ambush and attack. These are things that can take us away from concentrating on the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The greatest enemy of our lives and the relationship is the devil. The old serpent. The deceiver. From the deceit and corruption of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Till today, the wicked one is still laying ambush and attacks on God, his word of the kingdom, and God's people. Many people are still living in the sinfulness of sin and wickedness and operate in the church at all levels. We see them among the, the lay, we see them among the clergy, we see them among the bishops. Simon of the church of Samaria and Elimas the sorcerer and the false prophet who was with the proconsul, such as Paulus, is known to us. We are confronted by many false teachers and prophets and our members patronize them. The irony is that when they go to those places, they would not, they would be dumb and follow sheepishly. But in the Anglican church, they would challenge the authority of the church very boldly and have their opinion and know what the church should be doing. The invasion of the secret, the invasion of, of the secret court and the influence and their influence had been fought in this church of Nigeria. But can we say that we are free from their ambush and attacks? We pray for a fresh move of God. Yeah. As it was in, in, in Ephesus, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 19, when extraordinary signs and wonders were performed by the hands of Paul the Apostle, such that great healings and deliverance were wrought even with his handkerchief and apron. It was such that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was exalted and the power of evil and idol, idols diminished that Demetrius and his silver smiths rioted in, in Ephesus. We are trusting God 
for the move of his power to uproot every satanic deceit and influence God demands of us saying seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon worry anxiety and trials of life these are some of the things that challenge they are destroyers of faith in the living God where they exist faith disappears worry is an attempt by man to be independent and strive to achieve things by his own efforts by faith but faith acknowledges the sovereignty of God over our lives and our conditions such that the Lord make it, has the power to make one to be poor and to make one to be rich to bring down and to lift up he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap and set him among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory brethren it is possible God will do it again Amen. material possessions and worldly care these are things that challenge our faith we live in a generation that is materialistic and people are valued by what they possess or the positions they occupy but in God's estimation the human person and life itself are greater than possession Jesus Christ warned or saying take heed and beware of covetousness for, what, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of <clears throat> Amen worldly possessions and positions are best used to support the work of God's kingdom and help people realize their purpose in life as it is said money is what money can buy material blessings are added blessings to human life meant to be sabbath and not master of our lives do not attach your lives to any possession it belongs to God the giver and the owner of all let our attitude towards materialism be of be ordered by the scripture like Job the worship of God takes precedence over the worldly positions naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I shall return the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away blessed be the name of the Lord again Paul encourages us saying now godliness with contentment is a great gain for we brought nothing into the world and it is certain that we uh, we can carry nothing out greed inordinate ambition and wickedness are making a shipwreck of faith in Christ Jesus contentment detachment from the worldly possession to God will build the faith of Christ traditional cultures and worldly philosophies <laughs> you know this very well till now the church of Nigeria struggles with the duality syncretism and, and diverse cultural influences that promote clannish and tribal tendencies the Lord Jesus Christ points out that this is an element of half-hearted repentance and lack of total commitment to God and hardness of heart. It is a manifestation of it is a manifestation of hypocrisy in our relationship. As the scripture says, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. 
in our look in our local church or diocese or diocesan issues and social gatherings it is easier for people including the church leaders to follow their traditional practices and the commandments of men rather than the teachings of Christ and the scripture in some of our dioceses the cultural festivals and practices hinder the spread of the gospel and the consequent transformation that the light of Christ brings I don't know if it is today can we really be able to stop the killing of twins today can we enter into the bad forests today can we challenge those powerful practices of our traditions no the practices of burial widowhood social caste system seasonal festivals and and some troubles in our churches are caused by resurgence of traditional customs and the promotion by church members and in fact reverend right reverend som adebola of blessed memory the former bishop of yewa once said the challenge before the church of god therefore may be that of vigilance teaching care and yet loving discipline of our members of our members many of whom are willing to be guided I pray that we shall be ready to be guided. Brethren, we also have action and an from the pit of hell, the modern heresy and the so called knowledge of liberalism and attack on godliness. That as the Church of Nigeria, we will remain resolute against homosexuality. Christianism, transgender and cross-gender lifestyles that and will not associate with any church denomination or organization or province that accommodates or support or allows such ungodly practices. The Church of Nigeria remains out of communion with those churches that allow the blessing of same-sex marriage relationships or encourage solemnization of same-sex marriages and the practice or admit to holy orders or then those who practice same-sex marriages and those churches that pursue other departures from the biblical teaching we will disassociate from them but do you know that the battle is no longer out there it is in here we will not spare anybody by the grace of God. <laughs> Making God's priority our priority. The need of the moment is the time is in the timing of God is that the church of God shall return to the fundamental task of the church. The priority of God. The church of Nigeria guided by God shall make God's priority her priority and engage in the following as the implications of our team in the pursuit of God brethren we will encourage everyone to God. God is searching for a man a woman young old whose heart is hungry for God and his righteousness when he finds such a, a person God will manifest his, his power the power of his dominion in the life of that person this pursuit of God may be costly and unpopular but brethren it is better to die obey him re-evangelization and discipleship the world and our generation are turning against God, His righteousness and kingdom. Daily, we are seeing world government policies as turning on uh, to Antichrist and against the word of God. 
the modern Babylon and its ungodly halotry are being promoted by the systems that are surrounding us. But brethren, we must continue to proclaim Jesus Christ, who is the righteousness of God and the very radiance of his glory. And the more so, in him, we proclaim the reign and presence of God's kingdom. Praise God. Brethren, we will seek to build a disciplined, united and growing church. Peace, unity and discipline in this church. As a national church, growing and fulfilling God's purpose in our generation cannot be compromised. We need to work on, the, on identifying danger signs that can lead to breakdown of peace in our parishes, dineries, archdeaconries, and dioceses. A situation in which as we as bishops carry on doing things without minding the danger signs and complaints of the people cannot be tolerated. Sometimes, sacrifice for the good of the church is required and we need to do it in spite of our hearts. Although there, are, there may be difficult people and situations that will not want us to succeed, unity of the church is paramount for our coexistence and office. And I want to appeal to this general synod. Every one of us is important. You have a place. Please let us work as brethren and as a family. We shall not sacrifice any soul or congregation or diocese because of the interest of any bishop or clergy or laity or group. The dictates and provisions of the constitution and status of the Church of Nigeria and our dioceses must, be, must not be thwarted or convenience. Let us work together to resolve our differences and build this people of God that the Lord has committed to our care. We are making some attempts to build peace and reconciliation in the dioceses and groups that have challenges. The Church of Nigeria Interface and Peace Committee was inaugurated under the leadership of Right Reverend Dr. Samuel Ezofo, uh, right, uh, uh, right Reverend Marcus Dogo is a member, Honorable Justice Sibiu Mwaka, Barrister Chinelo and Azodo, Venerable Professor O. Opala, and Venerable Emos Ade Adebayo, who is the Director for uh, Peace and Justice, are members of this team. They trusting God for many breakthroughs. Another opening is before us. We have also personally intervened directly in the problems of Sapele and Okwa. It is still an ongoing process and we are believing God for great things to come. Education and human development, the greatest asset we have as a church is not, is, is not the building, it's not our bank accounts, it is the people. Just as we target outreach to the people, education and human development are integral parts of the mission of the church. As a national church, we shall work with dioceses and provinces at all levels of the education from nursery to tertiary education a church of Nigeria education tax force will be in place to give us a policy direction and monitor the work of education mission in the church of Nigeria the declining standard of in education require that the church will rise to give quality education that is rooted in sound Christian faith and living 
and in sound Christian faith and living that will help transform our society. The church must play a leading role in training our youth and building the future of this nation through education. We shall build on the missionary heritage of the church. The proposal for Anglican University of Technology at Quetta, Abuja. It is a fact that our mission history it is a fact it is a fact of our mission history that Bishop Ajay Crowder built an institute in Lokoja called Preparandi to train artisans, craftsmen and technicians who would engage in mission and commerce. This vision and effort was frustrated by the white missionaries. Till today, that area still bears the name Preparandi in Lokoja. We have acquired a large piece of land in Kweta, Abuja. The Federal Capital Territory Authority assigned this land for an Anglican university. A Bishop Nicholas Oko has named it Better Camp Land. And we intend to build the National Conference Center there. Work on the fencing of the land has reached an advanced stage. In line with the vision of Bishop Ajay Crowder and the overriding need for the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion to play a leading role in providing tertiary education and nation building, we shall establish the Anglican University of Technology at Quetta, Abuja. This will be our national church university. We acknowledge that we have um, universities in the three uh, main provinces, in province one, province two, and in province three, in the, uh, we have the um, Walter Miller uh, University, which is coming up just very close to us here. We hereby constitute the task force for the establishment of the university as follows. Professor Jerry Ghana as the chairman, Professor Adamu Beki as member, Right Reverend Professor Israel Okoye as member, Right Reverend Professor Emmanuel Ajulo as member, Professor Olubwe Miron Jegede as member, Barista OEB Ofion uh, SAN as member, Mazisamo Ohuabunwa as member, Dr. Yemi Ogumbi as member, Barista CC Okeke as member, and Professor Chinedu Nebo as member. <laughs> Healing and health care. Brethren, we were ashamed when the Roman Catholic during the COVID-19 pandemic gave over 400 hospitals to the federal government. <laughs> I was overtaken by fear because I know that we didn't have up to 10 functional ones and we had nothing to give. But considering the health care delivery, we are totally absent in pharma pharmacology and pharmaceutical services. In this decade of God's reign, God will make bare his holy arm to heal and to restore his people. A church as a church we shall encourage parishes, dioceses, and provinces to establish and administer and strengthen health care facilities. We need to explore the training of health professionals, pharmaceutical production, and research laboratories. There is the need to harness our members who are, in, who are health care professionals to serve God among us. The Church of Nigeria will need to explore the healing and the health care as a tool for evangelism and mission. 
it is proven that medical outreach can be a powerful support for mission and evangelism. A caring church in devastated situation. Uh, in response to the uh, COVID-19 and the, pro the challenges we faced, we established or constituted the National Church Relief Committee. And um, it is led by Dr. Peter Madu uh, as chairman. When you get your um, copy, you will see who the members are. We want every province to have their relief and support team to help dioceses facing devastation. We can overcome any, any adversity when we stand with God and with one another. May God help us. A church prepared for God's eternal kingdom. If we serve God just for the perishable wreath, tribal group interests, or worldly glory, we are of all people most to be pitied. May it be that God's kingdom and righteousness, the eternal and the imperishable reward, will become our focus. Whether we like it or not, our enormous privilege position also points us to the enormous accountability. Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of the church, is coming back again to rapture a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be without blemish. The purpose of our salvation and calling is to present us as God's people, holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight, if we are not moved from the hope of the gospel. The kingdom trusts. How do we move on to achieve the things that the Lord is laying before us? The 5 billion Naira Mission Fund 5 billion Naira Mission Fund. The Church of Nigeria needs to grow its finances and diversify her investment and ensure a stronger national church that is able to carry through her mission and ministry, sustain her institutions and continue to grow spiritually, numerically and imparting the society and our nation, politically, socially, educationally and otherwise. Coming from a mission background, we know the suffering, pain, and anxiety that bishops and clergy, evangelists, and their families go through, even when most of them live on less than 20,000 naira a month. We owe our mission, uh, mission, missionary workers working in the mission field since 2019 our CNMS workers, mission partners, we are owing them since 2019. Some of our bishops earn less than 50,000 Naira. And even then, we are not even sure of their regular salary. For us to enlarge the frontiers of, the, of mission of the gospel and build a growing church. We need money. We constituted an economic financial investment think tank on 17th July 2020 to look into the means and ways to raise funds to finance the mission and sustainable and so, uh, for sustainable investments and development and develop guidelines for the management of the finances of the church. They have worked sacrificially and submitted their report. They have also taxed themselves to raise the sum of 5.7 million to open the designated account as a seed money for the 5 billion Naira Mission Fund. The think tank has, is hereby enlarged and constituted as the Church of Nigeria Economic Financial and investment tax force. 
they will serve to implement the recommendations on finance and investment and will serve for a renew uh, and will implement the uh, sorry and will serve for a renewable term of three years the tax force shall be as follows right reverend dr chid Oparojiako as chairman professor o professor oka iwuchuku ezenwe as member mrs olabisi soyebo uh, as, uh, uh, senior advocate of nigeria otumba onushola owolana sa godfrey okwabunwa professor mrs stella madweme mrs nkemdilim e adi uh, mrs priscilla eleje sa kenechuku mweke mr maika jolomi Venerable Dr. Olayemi Fetusi, Right Reverend Dr. Samuel Sobowale, Showale, sorry, Showale, Right Reverend Timothy Yahaya, and the Treasurer of the Church of Nigeria. God will prosper your work, and through you, He will bless the mission and ministry of the Church of Nigeria. The process of the launching, which will be done immediately after this. Um, address and the process of this address will be put into this fund. Our target is 5 billion. It is possible. <laughs> Nevertheless, the Finance and Budgeting Committee of the Church of Nigeria still stands. But this, is, this team is a tax force in order to help us drive the realization of this vision. Repositioning CNMS. Our desire is that the Church of Nigeria Missionary Society will be repositioned uh, to be both our mission agency and also to be uh, function as a training institute for raising and sending of missions. No, missionaries. Bishop Ajay Crowder Memorial Center, Osobu. The first phase of the Bishop Ajay Crowder Memorial Center, Osobu, Osobu, has been completed. We need to dedicate it and commence the second phase. We thank Archbishop Shegu Okuba, Okubadejo and his team for the uh, and his team for the sacrifice and commitment that brought about this accomplishment. The Bishop Samuel Ajay Crowder Memorial Center Osogu shall become our National Church Mission Training Institute to raise, nurture, and send missionaries and kingdom laborers into the ripe harvest. The Church of Nigeria must play her role in bringing the world to the obedience of Christ Jesus and world mission. The Church of Nigeria Mission Conference for Strategic Move will be convened when the lockdown is totally over. The Joshua Generation Youth and Children Mission. We want to turn the children ministry and the youth ministry into a full-fledged mission. And we are setting a tax force to help us put together this, the mission uh, agenda for children and uh, the youth. This is made up of as follows, Right Reverend Aloysius Abo as anchor, Right Reverend For Former Nensin, Right Reverend Festus Sobank so Sobanke, Venerable Paul Wiskell, Venerable Chijoke Emmons, Venerable Alani T. Ajeshi, Mr. Rex Ono, Mr. Adebile, and Venerable Sam Igen Isemede, the retired Archdeacon. 
uh, the uh, members of this task force. Liturgical discipline and unity. There is need for, the, for unity and discipline in our liturgy and worship. The need to move as a national church and use what has been provided should be encouraged. A situation in which some bishops and dioceses do not make use of the Church of Nigeria Book of Common Prayers, the hymna, the Bible study outline, and other publications of the church is not healthy. We encourage our regional translators to commence full translations of these publications into Nigerian languages for the use of our people. The work on these and we shall review them after some years of use. The new chairman for the Liturgy and Spirituality Committee is Right Reverend Dr. Frolusho Babatunji, the Bishop of Oshu Diocese. We appreciate the level of love of this committee and God will continue to bless you. Establishment of ecclesiastical institutions of the Church of Nigeria. We hope by the grace of God that we shall establish these ecclesiastical institutions to help us grow the church and the ministry of the church. One, the Anglican Institute for Mission and Ministry. This will be established as a, as a research and policy formulation and implementation for, for the Church of Nigeria in areas of theology, ministry, socio-political issues and church engagement in the society. Articulation of the church's response to issues that affect our common life. Secondly, the church of Nigeria is blessed with human and material resources to build the ministry of the church and enhance, the, and enhance her mission to the world. To this end, we shall consider the establishment of a contemplative religious community that will be in line with our Orthodox Anglican faith and our evangelical heritage to sustain the growth of the church. The contemplative life demands total lifelong commitment to God and his church. God demands sacrifice and commitment from us to move the work of his kingdom in, our, in a generation that worldliness, ungodliness, and wickedness characterize the world around us. We shall strengthen our theological institutions and intentionally build the ministry opportunities for the laity in our church, mobilizing and equipping the laity into mission and ministry of the church is a task that must be done. <laughs> Review of the Church of Nigeria uh, vision. This has been done and we thank Archbishop David Onoha and the team of the clergy, laity of our church, the, the bishops, the clergy and the laity of our church who met and worked on this document uh, at Abaroto. The formal adoption shall be done tomorrow. Theological education and formation, uh, ministerial formation and, re and uh, the restoration of our Anglican heritage. We shall continue to work on this. Um, other Church of Nigeria matters. Election of, of the 13th General Synod officers. The election and appointment of officers for the 13th General Synod will be held uh, later this afternoon. And we are grateful and greatly indebted to our brother, Mr. Aziaba, and our sister, then Dr. Christy Toby, who have, by, who have served this church as treasurer and lay secretary for many years under, the, uh, under Archbishop Peter Akiola and Archbishop Nicola Soko. As they disengage, we pray that the Lord of the church 
will bless and be with them in the name of Jesus. Constitutional review. There will be a review and the passing of the relevant sections as amended in this general synod. We commend the efforts of the Church of Nigeria Committee of Reference uh, under our, uh, our registrar, uh, Dr. Abraham Yisa and his team. And we thank the diocese that responded to the request for the amendments and urge all of us to participate actively in, in this process. Crowder Graduate Theological Seminary at Biokuta. We want to thank all the people that God has used in order to build up this place. And uh, from Ashaju down to Igonosa. Um, we also sincerely appreciate the Right Reverend Dr. Stephen Fabemi, who served at, as the supervisor of that institution during the period of our interregnum. The search committee, led by Archbishop Professor Lashe Bikon, have done, conducted their, their interviews and they have finished their work. And by their recommendation, the Venerable Professor Taye Aluko has been appointed as the new rector of Crowder Graduate Theological Seminary at Biokuta. He will, say, he will serve a single term of five years. But brethren, let me make this clear. That becoming the rector, or rather, the rector position of the Crowder Graduate Theological Seminary at Biokuta is not a prelude to becoming a bishop. It is purely an academic position. The Anglican tradition recognizes church divines and saints who distinguish themselves as bishops, pastors, teachers, and martyrs of the church. This needs to be made clear so that nobody or group we make it a campaign issue by next year. We thank the Most Reverend Dr. Bupa Lamido, the Dean of the Church of Nigeria, who serves as the Chair of the Governing Board and his team. Baba, we are very grateful. The new Governing Board of the institution shall be reconstituted in due time. So Matthias Fund, this year, by the grace of God, we realized 156 million eight hundred and fifty-four thousand four hundred and ninety-three naira. And we have given, shared, and supported dioceses, institutions, and uh, other organizations of the church but from next year 2021 we will no longer be sharing the 1 1 million <laughs> praise the Lord you know some of our dioceses we, we hang on that 1 million I was in that situation There will be St. Matthias Fund shall now function as an annual revolving fund to be given to dioceses, institutions and organizations of the Church of Nigeria in order to enable them start ventures and investments that will sustain them financially. that will benefit will be selected from the apply applications and the investment proposals that they will submit. There will be good spread of the selected beneficiaries and the conditions will be set and applied 
by the managers of the fund. Sir Matthias fund managers shall be as follows. Right, Reverend Dr. Chiji Aparodiak. You'll be asking me, why are you calling this? You know that is a, a bishop with uh, <laughs> some business. Uh, he doesn't fear money. <laughs> the right Reverend Samuel Sobo Sobo Wale Showale, sorry. Sorry. Showale. Right Reverend Timothy Yahaya. Venerable Dr. Fatusi, uh, Professor Stella Madweme, Mrs. Priscilla Eleje, and Venerable Dalimo Odige. SCNN Board Management and Operations. There is need for building up the SCNN and our media outfit. Uh, of the Church of Nigeria so as to meet the challenges and needs of our church in this modern age. This is a, an important organ for the propagation of the gospel and teaching of the undiluted word of God. We are working to extend our platform in the, to the DSTV and the other platforms to improve our coverage. We appreciate the labor of these brethren. DIFCON 2020. We want to thank the most reverend uh, um, Adele and his team. The planning for uh, DIVCON 2020 has reached an advanced stage. This conference will hold from 16th to 20th of November 2020. And this will be the main center of the conference. But we are working to change the, the way we have been doing things. We will be using some churches within Abuja Metropolis uh, as, uh, as um, conference centers. So dioceses will be grouped to be in those centers and it will be relayed all through the city. So as to uh, everybody will we participate fully. So, the theme for 2020 is We Are More Than Conquerors. Amen. Amen. Romans 8, verse 37. In any case, we shall observe the necessary COVID-19 protocols and uh, we encourage as many of our people as possible to come. All of us will not converge here. We will be at different centers and participate in the same program. Kenya and UK Europe missions. We are working on this and we thank God for our bishops and uh, our sovereign bishops in Kenya, in uh, USA. Uh, we also appreciate our chaplains. Uh, our chaplain and our missioner in UK. Um, the exit of Dobbs from Kenya to join uh, Akna uh, with his diocese left us with pains and uh, with some problems which even threatened the very existence of Kenya as an incorporated um, organization in Texas. Um, work is on and uh, we will let you know as we go on. But we thank God for the progress being made. Our churches are growing and they are getting centers of worship and buying churches for worship. We thank God for the sacrifice they are making. We appreciate Bishop Oji, our mission bishop there, and we commend Right Reverend Amos and Mama Fabemie, the Bishop of ADOTT, who held their last Synod and Women Conference this September. You stood strong for God and the Church of Nigeria and advanced the cause of the Gospel of Christ. God will honor you, Baba, all 
all through your life and give you good health as you disengage from active ministerial service of the church. GAFCON The right Reverend Professor Ashaju was appointed and confirmed as the bishop in charge of the training of Bishop Institute, uh, Bishop's Training Institute of GAFCON. And uh, his versatility will ensure the training of new bishops in the GAFCON family. During our GAFCON Primates uh, meeting, conference in June, uh, the Church of Nigeria, through the primate, brought a proposal that GAFCON, as an organization and a mission body of Christ, should be focused. And the proposal was that the years 2020 to 2030 should be adopted as decade of discipleship as a follow up on the decade of evangelism this was this has been adopted and we wait for the outworking of the programs and strategy for the implementation by the GAFCON Secretary General uh, Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi and his team Advent Collection the second mandatory collection for the church, National Church is the Advent Sunday Collection. This is meant to fund specific National Church projects such as the National Secretariat for three, uh, three years where we are. The process of this collection helped us in building this place. The Advent Collection was also targeted for the building of Bishop Ajay Crowder Memorial Mission Center Oshogu, uh, which we say we have finished the first phase. Another thing that we have realized through that collection is that 2019 collection was dedicated to ACNN television station. We appeal to the archbishops and bishops and indeed the whole church that the advent collection for the next three years 2020 to 2022 be dedicated to the development of the better camp land Kweta Abuja the physical development task force for the Anglican University of, of Technology will utilize this fund for the development of the place, especially building our conference center, um, which we have already marked out. The creation of diocese. At Bishop Oko placed a moratorium on the creation of diocese in order to consolidate the existing diocese, especially the needy ones. Although Early this year, a committee under Archbishop Israel Amao went round some selected areas and submitted reports for the creation of some dioceses. We are new in office. And the need, the need to understudy the situation and to consolidate and sustain the enormous work started by my predecessors is of utmost importance. <laughs> Therefore, we are placing a moratorium on the creation of dioceses, whether full-fledged or missionary, for a period of three years. This will be reviewed by the next General Synod. This will give me time to know where I am. Because you know the politics 
that we are in. Where we are is our National Secretariat, St. Matthias House. This National Church Headquarters and Edifice was uh, dedicated on Wednesday, 24th April 2019. Peter Jasper Akiola, assisted by Archbishop Maxwell, S.C. Anikwenwa, we commissioned a team, a team of quantity surveyors and, and uh, valuers to assess the building for insurance. They have submitted their report. The building is valued for over two billion uh, five six hundred million naira. We need to set aside annually about twenty six million naira for insurance or a sinking fund for its maintenance. A dedicated account will be opened for this purpose and it will be part and it will be part of the budget of the national church welfare of the clergy and other church workers the cry of the clergy and other church workers are sounding louder every year Archbishop Nicholas Oko fought to see that the clergy welfare is improved we appreciate the improvement recorded but it is unfortunate that up until now, we still have many dioceses that are not able to pay the clergy and church workers regularly. There are factors contributing to this, among which is poverty and lack of regular sufficient income to meet needs of the church. In some places, we have the, in, the indifference and complacence of the bishops to the plight of the church workers, either due to more attention to projects than welfare of the workers or selfish greed. The truth is that in B some bishops recruit and ordain many clergy and give preferments so uncontrollably that they do not have enough funds to pay them. Every ordination and preferment has its financial body. That we must note. Bishops must, must count the cost before doing preferment. Ordination. The scripture makes it clear that the laborer deserves his wage. And an angry clergy can do anything and this is the reason some of the problems we are facing now are coming we must motivate and encourage the clergy and the workers of the church and give them hope and future the dioceses that have no pension scheme for their clergy must strive to establish one for them in order to improve on the standards and conditions of the ministry and welfare of the clergy in the Church of Nigeria. We shall establish a national board for ministry and welfare. This board will work out the minimum standard that is expected in the practice of ministry and welfare of ministers in the Church of Nigeria. A situation where dioceses and bishops do just what they like is unacceptable. The National Board shall be as follows. Co-Chairman, Most Reverend Olushina Fape, Most Reverend Daniel Yisa, and Most Reverend David Chairman. Most, Rever Most Reverend Emmanuel Ebunu, Member, Bishop David Bello, Member, Bishop Stephen Fabemi, member. Bishop Daniel Kenjika, member. Bishop Timothy Yahya, member. Bishop Dapo Achaju, member. Bishop Prezi Somole Kun, member. Bishop Samuel Showale, member. Lay and clergy representatives will also join them. 
Their interim report will be presented during our Episcopal retreat in January 4th to 7th, 2021. Our gratitude. We owe our lives to the Almighty God and His protection over us in this COVID-19 pandemic era. Even though it is not yet over, but we trust God to keep us safe to the end. We thank all our archbishops and bishops, clergy and our evangelists and their wives for their sacrifice in the service of God and this church and humanity. May God bless and renew your strength continually. We are grateful to the laity and the women, the youth and children ministries and all the organizations of the church. God will remember and reward you now and in eternity. We thank the Diocese of Abuja for the wonderful hosting of this 13th General Synod of the, in, the, in this new National Secretariat of the Church of Nigeria and the very first in my primacy. God will reward our members and bless the diocese. On behalf of the Church of Nigeria, we express our profound gratitude to Most Reverend Dr. Nicholas D. Oko and Mama Cassio B. Oko for the bold and godly leadership you sacrificially gave to the Church of God. Your legacies will be sustained and in your retirement you will enjoy robust health and God will renew your strength daily. We thank all our friends, our retired fathers in faith, and all the officers of the church, and I show you of our prayers and our support. God will remember and bless you. Our sorrows. The Lord Almighty God will heal all who are sick, especially those infected by coronavirus. We stand with those who have lost their beloved ones and beloved family members and other members of our church. We stand with all who mourn. In recent times, we lost the Right Reverend Awoshoga, the Lord Bishop of uh, Ijebu, the Right Reverend Professor Nkwoka, the retired Bishop of Niger West, the Right Reverend Samuel O. Ajani, the retired Bishop of Eba West Diocese, the Mrs. F.O.B., uh, wife of the retired uh, bishop of, Ni of the Niger province and bishop of Ago uh, retired bishop of Agoata diocese. The Honorable Justice Karibi White, former chancellor for the Church of Nigeria, we express our condolences to their families and dioceses and console, and console all our Diocesan officials and members who lost their dear ones. May God, may the God of all comfort console them with his everlasting consolation and grant eternal rest to the departed and may they rise in glory at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We rejoice with the newly consecrated bishops and their families and pray God to guide and bless your ministry in the church of God. We congratulate all those who are blessed with marriages, childbirth, graduations, employments, promotions, and happy retirement. Your joy and testimonies shall abide, and God will bless you immensely. 2021 Standing Committee Meetings. The next Standing Committee meeting will be hosted by the Diocese on the Niger, uh, which will be from Tuesday night to Friday 12th February 2021. The Diocese of Lagos will host us Monday 13th to Thursday 16th September 2021. In conclusion, as a bishop, clergy, lay, politician, 
leader in the church or community or as a, a Christian let us know that anyone who does who does not have any compelling sense of mission given by God will live an unfulfilled life what can we live or die for what is the purpose of our life does that purpose have eternal value God is calling his church back in order that we will give ourselves to the priority of God the core task of preaching the wholesome gospel of the grace of God his kingdom and righteousness we are surrounded by many needs insecurity poverty devastations but pondering on Matthew 6 33 Oswald, Oswald Chambers said don't make the ruling factor of your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink but concentrate absolutely on God Jesus is saying that the great care of life is to put the relationship to God first and everything else second God is raising his kingdom citizens from every people groups religious experience culture and social class his eternal plan is that when jesus shall come and gather his saints it shall be a great multitude which no one could count of all nations tribes and peoples tongues standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands my prayer is that we all shall be in that gathering more than ever before we are determined to uphold the vision of the church of nigeria that the church of nigeria anglican communion shall be bible based spiritually dynamic united disciplined self-supporting committed to pragmatic evangelism social welfare and a church that epitomizes the genuine love of Christ. Thank you so much, dear fathers and people of God. May God be among us to refresh and bless us and lead us into the future. Welcome to the decade of the reign of God in our lives, in our ministries, in our families, in the church of God. God bless you. We can do better, we can do better. Let's celebrate the grace of God upon our primate. I say we can do better, please. We can do better. Can you hear you?